Welcome to the Naturally Healthy Pets podcast. Let's get to it. Welcome to the Naturally Healthy Pets podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Judy Morgan. My guest today is Joni Camlet, and I actually, reading her bio, learned a couple things that I didn't know because we've known each other for a while. Today, we are going to talk about mushrooms and how mushrooms can help our pets because Joni is big into mushrooms, and we're going to discuss that. But Joni is a registered veterinary technician. I did not know that. And certified in canine rehabilitation. I did not know that. You've been hiding things. Uh, Joni witnessed the benefits of raw feeding, homeopathy, and herbs in 1996 when her dog was uh, diagnosed with mammary cancer. And Joni was diagnosed with ovarian cancer at the same time. Congratulations, you're still here because that's a tough one. Uh, that is amazing. And both of their positive responses to natural therapies started Joni on her holistic path, and she's been working in the field of integrative veterinary medicine ever since. Welcome, Joni. Thank, <clears throat> thank you. It's so good to be here, Dr. Judy. I'm, as you know, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> I follow well, you everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time at we events have. together lately. <laughs> we have. You're probably sick of me by now. <laughs> no, never, never. So, uh, okay. So your yeah, your dog had mammary cancer and right. you had ovarian cancer at the same time. And I yeah. know that's not what this is about, but I know. <laughs> first of all, that's amazing yeah. uh, because we do know that our pets take on a lot of exactly. things from yeah. us. Um, so I guess I'm not hugely shocked that both of you had a similar cancer, um, at right. the same time. So did either of you go through traditional route and just add on integrative or, uh, natural therapies or did you use yeah. totally natural therapies? Well, so yeah, I mean, I knew nothing about integrative therapies at all when this happened. So this was really my life changing experience, you know, uh, that set me on the path. But uh, they took an 18 centimeter cyst out of me. So it was the size of a six month fetus um, that was encapsulating my right ovary. And wow. usually cysts are not cancerous. So I had said, like, unless you know it's cancer, don't take anything else. So they didn't. And then they came back a week later and said, we sent it out to three different labs Oops. and you, it is cancer. We want to uh, go back in, give you a complete hysterectomy, stage you from your diaphragm to your bowel, you know, so figure out what stage and then do chemo and radiation. And something in me just said, no, I, like I knew nothing. I'd been a bartender, I drink a <laughs> college dropout. Like I knew nothing. Like, you know, I was just kind of living my life. Um, and uh, in that moment, everything changed. And yeah. my dog Waffles had the mammary cancer. And so... It was looking for things to do instead of the Western medicine, which just, it scared the heck out of me, you know? Sure. And so I did everything. I, you know, macrobiotic diet, uh, Chinese herbs. Uh, uh, I, was, I became a raw food vegan. I, I did, you know, funny, I didn't know about mushrooms back then. Um, <laughs> so I did everything without mushrooms. And I started uh, doing the same things with my dog waffles uh, that I was doing for myself, uh, homeopathy being one of them, and uh, found a, a homeopathic vet. And uh, anyway, here I am. It's like, what, 27, 28 years later. It's amazing. Um, you know, and, you know, I'll say it, they could have gotten the cancer with the surgery. Like, we'll never know because right. I, I walked away from the Western medicine. Um, wow. But And frankly, so much of chemo actually causes cancer. Yes. Yes. So sometimes you get sort of in remission or cured from one cancer and then end up with something else. And yeah. certainly we know the side effects are atrocious. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so good for you. You'd probably feel a lot worse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, looking back, I'm, I, you know, I'm so grateful, you know, I did what I did and I'm grateful for the outcome. And it, like I said, it set me on my path. Um, I went, you know, uh, I knew I wanted to work in integrative medicine and the idea of working with people to be honest, just totally creeped me out. I always loved the animals. I'm you the know? same way. I, I can't <laughs> like human medicine. If you cut your finger, I'm leaving the room. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to deal with any human fluids, but yeah, you know, exactly. but an animal, it's like, Oh my gosh, let me, you know, let me look at this. Abscess. Let me fix that. Like, <laughs> let's see what comes out. But that's typical in the vet world. We love to, we love to squeeze things and see what comes out. Right. <laughs> Yeah, but not on people. Well, no, not on people. Definitely. <laughs> so, 
So when did you discover mushrooms? <laughs> so um, that was uh, that was not until uh, 2019. Um, well, so new. yeah, so you know, I went, I, I became, you know, I went into hands-on vet medicine, went in, went into canine rehabilitation, and then started working for Standard Process. And so I worked for Standard Process for a decade, from uh, starting in 2010, and. Uh, Standard Process was going through some transitions uh, in 2019, and my uh, m- one of my mentors <clears throat> and teachers, a uh, herbalist named Lee Carroll, uh, was became very interested in mushrooms. He was working for Mediherb, and he left Mediherb to go work for a company called Aduco, formulating a mushroom product. And I followed him, and <laughs> I knew nothing about mushrooms, um, but I was going to be the one that was going to be sharing these mushroom supplements with veterinarians. And we were using Namex Mushrooms, which is the parent company for real mushrooms. And um, it was, I went down the rabbit hole of lion's mane, learning about lion's mane and the benefits and had such a profound experience with lion's mane uh, with a group of veterinarians that were using it for dogs with degenerative myelopathy um, Mm. that it changed my life. I mean, I've now moved to Virginia from Berkeley, California, about five acres, uh, four of it's forested, um, and have just left, you know, uh, went to real mushrooms and said, please hire me. All I want to do is work with mushrooms for the rest of my life. That's amazing. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> And uh, along with Rob Silver. Well, yeah. Nothing like having, you know, somebody who wants to be an employee come in and say, all I want to do is work with <laughs> mushrooms and you're a mushroom supplement company. Yeah, that would work. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So uh, Sky Chilton, the owner, like he, he listened and uh, I guess saw, saw the wisdom. And uh, along with uh, Dr. Rob Silver, who is the formulator for our product line, um, I've been doing it ever since. And so I get awesome. to spend all day reading about mushrooms, talking about mushrooms, foraging for mushrooms in my, uh, for in, mushrooms. my in my yard, you know, um, when I'm not yeah. talking about I, them. I, I need to get one of those uh, plant identifier yeah. apps. Is there a, a mushroom identifier app that I can get on my phone? Yeah, it's called. There P- is? Yeah, okay. there's a few. Although, I mean, I wouldn't eat a mushroom that a mushroom app identifies. Like, you know, they're not oh, 100%. No. Um, oh, what I like, I like to use iNaturalist or, um, actually the Facebook mushroom group in your area is the best. You go on like every, every state has a mushroom group and you really? can post pictures of a mushroom you find. And there's so many people that will give you good identification. I had no clue yeah. there were like mushroom. There's crazy mushroom people all over, the, all over the country. <laughs> Crazy mushroom people everywhere. No, only because, uh, you know, I see, like, especially if my husband mows the fields when there's a lot of mushrooms out there, of course, we're spreading the spores everywhere. And then two weeks later, it's like, I have a really nice crop out here. I have no idea if it's good or bad. (laughs) We usually call them LBM, little brown mushrooms. (laughs) <laughs> of which there's like these are 10, big. varieties. Oh, okay. These are big white mushrooms. Oh. I don't know what they are, but they're they're popping up everywhere. So. You'll, you'll have to send me pictures. I will. Uh, okay, I'll, I can do I'll that. That'd be I, cool. I get <laughs> my text is full of people who send me mushroom pictures, and I love it. Please keep sending them. You know, I think mushroom <laughs> pictures would be better than what I get in my inbox because mine are usually poop pictures. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'll t- yeah, I'll take the mushrooms. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. So. Um, mushroom supplement quality yes. issues, because, yeah. uh, I've been learning a lot right. about mushrooms, listening to Angela yeah. Ardolino talk about, yeah. talk about mushrooms yes. and how they're processed and right. how they're grown mm-hmm. and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but the question I have for you, I mean, we know that we, we want the whole mushroom, right. not a lot of substrate ground up in there. Right. Um, but does it matter? It, so if I'm getting mushrooms from a company that is uh, harvesting them correctly right. and letting them grow to be the, the whole mushroom, yeah. does it matter whether it's in a liquid or a powder or a chew? Like, yeah. Are they all the same bioavailability or is it, does it change? You know, that's a great question. And I don't think we are completely clear on the answer to that yet. I mean, uh-huh. I... 
I'll address the the powder mushroom issue because that's what we work with. Um, okay. You know, one thing I'll say about mushroom quality is there's there's three parts to a fungus. Um, there's the mushroom, which is the part that's it, the above ground. That's what you see. It's the typical um, image of a mushroom. You know, it's kind of right. like a uh, like. Uh, it looks like a mushroom. Uh, right. And then there's the spore, which is the reproductive part. And then there's the mycelium, which is, I, I guess, could best be compared to the roots of okay. a plant, although fungi and plants are completely separate. They have their own kingdoms. But um, the biggest challenge with mushroom quality is that mushrooms are very, they're hard to grow. They're very particular. They need um, they need a particular light, they need water, air, um, and in order for that actual mushroom, which is the part, the above ground part, to, uh, to decide to, uh, to come up, uh, it takes between three and six months. And most mushroom companies, they don't have time to wait for that to happen. Right. Financially, they can't do it for, for efficiency reasons. So what they do is they inject the mushroom spore into a block of rice or oats. And then that mycelium, kind of the little fingers of the mycelium grow all in through that, the oats or the rice. And maybe a few mushroom, what they call fruiting bodies will pop up. But for the most part, it's just a whole lot of mycelium uh, encapsulated in that rice or oat. And there's no way to separate that mycelium. So what they do is they grind up that block of rice or oats with the mycelium and they call it a mushroom. And mm. it's not a mushroom. It's, right. and I'm not saying that it's not a good, you know, I'm not addressing the quality of that product. I'm addressing the transparency of doing that. And so, right. um, you know, I would say buyer beware as far as that. And some companies label it as like myceliated grain or mycelium on grain. If you have a dog with that's on a ketogenic diet or you're trying to avoid grains, people, you know, sometimes they have a dog with cancer. They don't know that they're getting that that right. quote mushroom product has grain in it. So regarding quality, I'd say be very careful about that. This is why we call ourselves real mushrooms, because we don't use the grain or the mycelium. Now, mycelium has great benefits. Um, you know, there's uh, there are a lot of clinical studies happening. Um, there's no traditional history uh, with mycelium. So I like to combine the traditional uses with the latest in modern science. And there's just, that's just not there with mycelium. Um, okay. But if, you know, people are out there looking for a mushroom product, make sure, I would say, if you're looking for a mushroom, make sure it's not that mycelium on grain or mog product. Now, the liquid issue, I've become very interested in the tinctures and I've like reached out to Angela, I reached out to Julianne from Adored Beast. Um, and I think that there's a lot of benefits uh, to the tinctures. Um, I still trying to figure out how the beta glucan quality is determined in the liquid tinctures. And I've been kind of going down that rabbit hole and I haven't, <laughs> I've yet to get the, uh, a clear answer. Um, uh, I, there's a method called the McCleary method, which is the kind of the gold standard of testing for beta glucans. And I know a lot of these companies that use liquid, they, they use a modified McCleary method. And I don't know what that modified method is. So this is where it's me being just kind of a mushroom nerd. And I just, <laughs> I just want to know everything. Um, having said that, I love the tinctures. And I think that Angela's product and uh, the Adored Beast products are, are wonderful. Um, I think that... Which is good because yeah. we like them <laughs> as well. Yeah. We need to take a quick yeah. break to hear from our sponsor. We'll be right back to talk more okay. about mushrooms. Isn't it amazing to learn about how mushrooms can benefit our pets? As a thank you for listening to this podcast, get 10% off any Real Mushrooms products featured on naturallyhealthypets.com using the code PODCAST17. Real Mushrooms is Dr. Judy's recommendation for 100% organic mushroom extract powders and capsules. Support your dog or cat's health with these mushroom supplements, verified with beta-glucans and no grain fillers. Welcome back to Naturally Healthy Pets Podcast. My guest today is Joni Camlet, who happens to be a mushroom nerd, as we have just Big learned. Nerd. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm a, a huge fan of uh, the Myco Dog and Adored Beast tinctures, but I'm also a huge fan of Real Mushrooms yeah. Powder. And so my little guy who has 
cancer is on all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Because yeah. I, I, and, and so I'll ask you this. My feeling is sort of like you kind of can't overdo mushrooms. Yeah. I, I don't think we could feed enough mushrooms to kill somebody. No, I mean, mushrooms. I mean, good mushrooms. Yeah, <laughs> well, exactly. There are, yeah. And I should say, you know, I try to say in every podcast do not feed your pet or eat mushrooms that you forage unless you're an expert mycologist or have somebody that can identify them. We we're talking about medicinal mushrooms that you know, <laughs> have been vetted. So, right. you know, be careful there. Um, but I can't, but, you know, mushrooms, it's the amazing thing about mushrooms is they're functional foods and they're therapeutic, you know, uh, you know, the therapeutic, I'll use the word medicine, even though they're, you know, that word is very Western, but you, it's, it would be like overdosing on, you know, broccoli or something like that. Right. So, right. I mean, technically you could, uh, you can overdose on water. Yeah. So technically, sure. uh, I suppose you could overdose on anything, yeah. but I get, mushrooms are so good for gut health. The, the, exactly. the fiber yeah. is, is just a great prebiotic, but they're, they're also really good. Yes. Now, uh, all the different mushrooms sort of have, um, I mean, they're all beneficial, yeah. but they seem to target certain right. things. Right. So you said you started out really learning about, uh, so much about yes. lion's mane and studies for that. Yeah. So let's talk about lion's mane. Sure. When, when when would you want to incorporate lion's mane as your main mushroom? Um, so I would use lion's mane with any older dog. And I should just, I'll try to make this really quick. So when I, I was reading, I was studying up on lion's mane uh, to be able to teach my veterinarians how to use it. And there was a clinical study uh, supporting the benefit of lion's mane to help with the regeneration of the myelin sheath. And this is something that when dogs have degenerative myelopathy, that myelin sheath begins to wear, wear away. And so when I read this, I sent the lion's mane out to all my rehab vets. I said, try this with your rehab dogs, with your DM dogs. Let me know how it works. Well, the feedback was so-so for DM, but all the pet parents that were using it wanted to keep the product because the cognitive uh, changes in their pets were noticeable. And it happened pretty quickly. Um, and I was working with 12 vets and I've never had this happen. All 12 veterinarians gave positive feedback on the lion's mane related to cognitive function. They said, wow. you know, dogs were finding the dog door where they couldn't before. They were making direct eye contact, initiating play, not vocalizing at night, finding their way around the furniture. We did a, We actually did a study group because I was so blown away. And you have to remember, I wasn't looking for cognitive uh, changes. I was looking for <laughs> DM changes. So that's awesome. when I say it was my gateway, it really was. So any older animal with cognitive issues, but it also uh, supports nerve growth factor. It's great for any neurologic issue. Traditionally, lion's mane was used for the gut. So IBD and ulcers was originally how lion's mane has been used for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. So, um, you know, an older dog with uh, digestive issues, maybe they're on Rimadyl or something like that. The lion's mane can support the gut. Um, all mushrooms are great prebiotic, but it's also going to support their cognitive abilities and their ability uh, to move, basically. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, what other mushrooms would be more specific for gut health. I mean, yeah. they're all good, yeah. but do you have, do you have other ones that you really like for gut health? Cause we, I mean, that's yeah. IBD and allergies are like the right. biggest problems right. that veterinarians treat dogs yeah. for, um, cats a little bit, but, yeah. uh, I mean, that's, that's the biggies. So is there another specific yeah. mushroom that you would try for gut health, uh, for IBD? Yeah. Well, turkey tail is a great prebiotic. I mean, all mushrooms have prebiotic Qualities, so you're not going to go wrong no matter which mushroom you pick. Um, chaga is often used uh, to support uh, gut health. Um, personally, I like our five defenders, and you know we've talked about it before it's because it's got <laughs> turkey tail, chaga, maitake, uh, reishi, and which one am I? Turkey. Which one am I? Shiitake. <laughs> Your favorite shiitake. <laughs> um, it's my favorite. So you know, for gut health, I would just go right to. Uh, right to the five defenders because, you know, the, the beta glucans in the, in all mushrooms, uh, they make great prebiotics They're They're actually not digested well in the system. They, they stay in the gut and they, they, you know, they act as wonderful prebiotics. 
So um, we were talking about allergies mm -hmm. uh, recently as one of our yeah. focus weeks, um, and we were we we chose reishi yes. as kind of our top allergy yep. one because it actually uh, functions sort of as a natural antihistamine. It is antihistaminic. That's right. Yes. Yes. So, so with that said, for um, we see so much mast cell yes. cancer in dogs. Would reishi be our mushroom Absolutely. of choice for mast cell dogs? I would. I would definitely be giving high doses of reishi. Although you have to be aware, reishi is very, very bitter. It's the most bitter of all the mushrooms, and uh, you want a bitter reishi because that the the bitterness is related to the quality. The more bitter, the better quality reishi you're getting. <laughs> But if you are using reishi, you're not going to want to like mix the powder in with the food. You're probably going to want to give it as a capsule. Or if there's a tincture, I don't know. I, the tinctures would probably be a little bitter, but maybe they're mixed with uh, something that make you know, the flavor that makes it taste a little better. But that that would be my one caution about about reishi. And so the only reason not to mix it with the food is just because of the, the bitterness. bitterness. You don't want I to mean, stop them from eating. Yeah, animals, okay. you know, instinctively avoid bitter um, because most poisons happen to be bitter, but also many, many good medicines, uh, actually many good uh, digestive uh, medicines that support digestion are also bitter. I uh, think on mm. the human side, think of digestive bitters. This is why, you know, we drink these uh, before we eat food. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I have to say my little guy that is on so many mushrooms, he is, he is on a two, three tinctures, <laughs> And the five yeah. defenders powder. Yeah. And he just chows down. Thank God he's a good eater. <laughs> yes. I mean, he's just like, okay, how much more stuff That's are you going to throw in my yeah. food? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I love them. Okay. So, um, so for our seniors, we definitely want to do lion's right. mane. And then for any kind of uh, like severe allergies, maybe straight reishi. Ch um, is Chaga there... is also uh, good for allergies. I would say reishi, reishi would okay. be my first choice, but chaga is also has some anti, uh, anti-histaminic, anti-allergenic effects. Now, turkey tail has been studied pretty extensively yes. for cancers. Yes. So would that be your kind of your go-to as far as general cancer? Yeah. If I had a dog with cancer, I'd be giving very high doses of turkey tail. Um, I will say those, the studies uh, that were done, there was two studies done on turkey tail and it was done on the turkey tail mycelium, not on the fruiting body. Although okay. <clears throat> just to be clear, because we talked about those MOG products, this was a mycelium that they extracted in a liquid broth, a very complicated process. It's patented. It's a, uh, it's a product called Immunity. And this is why right. it's so expensive is because it's so complicated to make uh, very different than myceliated products that you can find in the marketplace. And there was a study it. in 2012, uh, dogs with hemangiosarcoma had uh, right. extended survival times on high doses of this immunity product. Now, the, unfortunately, there was another study done in 2022 with a, high, uh, a larger cohort of dogs. There was about 100 compared to, I think about between nine and 12 dogs in the first study. And it wasn't as impressive. I mean, I'll just be frank. It was not as impressive. Hmm. Um, and uh, they used more parameters. They had some dogs that were on chemo. Some weren't. Some were on the chemo and okay. uh, the turkey tail. Um, male dogs did better than female dogs, uh, interestingly. Um, but honestly, we weren't surprised because our feeling is that you want the whole fruiting body um, or the whole mushroom. Right as opposed to the mycelium. and But you know, it's interesting because that original study mm -hmm. on the immunity products was done at University yep, of Pennsylvania. Exactly. And I was practicing in Southern yeah. New Jersey. Um, Kendra Pope, and I yeah. mean, you just, you just sparked a memory for me uh, because I think that's when I really right. started and I didn't actually didn't use that product, but that's when I really started incorporating yep. mushrooms into a lot of my protocols. Yep because of that right. study. Uh, you know, unfortunately, yes, that is an expensive product. And now I understand why. Yeah. So thank you for that. Um, and a lot of my clients could not afford it, yeah, especially for big dogs. So that was why we just said, okay, well, let's find other mushroom outlets, avenues. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't know near as much about how they're harvested right. or, you know, whole, whole mushroom versus, yeah. you know, the MOG products, uh, back then. So I think we were using a fermented mm -hmm. mushroom product that had 
you know, multiple mushrooms in it. Um, couldn't even begin to tell you how it was right. made or what parts of the mushroom were included, but it just became a, a really important yeah. part of all of my protocols for sick animals. So yeah. Um, I've been using mushrooms for a lot of time, but uh, it's only in, actually in the past few years since we've started carrying right. mushroom products and I've had to really look at how they're made and how they work <clears throat> and that sort of thing that, you know, I have a so much better understanding right. of the mushroom products and, now. <laughs> and, you know, you know, on the integrative medicine side, we don't have the kind of money to do the clinical studies. I mean, real mushrooms, we would love, you know. We have it on our, uh, uh, you know, on our list. Vision we board. want to do uh, <laughs> clinical studies on, you know, the fruiting body, you know, at high doses to see, you know, uh, for dogs maybe and maybe not pick hemangiosarcoma. I mean, they picked the, one of the hardest cancers to, you know, uh, to cure. I mean, you know, luckily, you know, it did extend, you know, the, the, the mushrooms can, you know, in, in, in many cases extend life. But, you know, and I know you probably get tons of anecdotal feedback from people that are using turkey tail uh, and the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. My, my biggest problem with uh, feedback and studies is like, for instance, my yeah. little guy, he's on a whole bunch of mushroom products, but then he's on a whole bunch of right. other things as well. And so when you're looking at clinical studies, you want to only exactly. have one variable yeah. that you're looking at. And if you're like me and you've got a pet with cancer, you're going to throw the exactly. kitchen sink at, yeah. well, I, I, I'm not not throwing the chemo kitchen sink or the radiation <laughs> kitchen sink, but anything natural that I think right. is going to help this little guy. Um, he's on a lot of whole food yep. products. He's on a lot of herbs and he's on a lot of mushroom products. Um, and knock on yeah. wood, so far so good. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm ecstatic about where we're, we're going yes. with him. So um, I think mushrooms are a huge part of any kind of cancer right. protocol, but I think that uh, they really need to be incorporated as just a general a daily supplement. supplement. Yes. Daily supplement because they, they also work for cancer yes. prevention, not yes. just treatment. They, I, I like to say they add a vigilance and a vitality to the system. And, you know, it's, there you, go. you know, mushrooms are not for the most part, not acute use products. Uh, they should be taken daily. Um, I think lifelong. And what you'll notice um, in your, if you're taking them yourself or in your pets is you have more energy. You don't succumb to colds and flus as easily. Um, you sleep better um, mentally. You know, uh, mush there are mushrooms that can help balance your mood. Uh, reishi, for instance, uh, tremella is another one. Um, so just it gives you an overall vitality um, and it will do the same for, for your pets. It's awesome. Okay. Uh, we're out of time. I could talk to you about <laughs> mushrooms for a long time. This is, this is, and that kind of surprises me that I can talk about mushrooms for oh, a long well. time, but I, I mean, they are, they're, they're yeah. just amazing. So real mushrooms yeah. is the company that Joni That's works right. for right now. They are on all the social media, yeah. so you can follow them. And, uh, we have the real mushrooms products on That's our right. website. So there's, uh, you can read about each of the mushrooms and what they're recommended for, uh, and their different uses. But, um, Joni, thanks for all My the work pleasure. that you're doing and you're helping a lot of animals and people. And we really oh, appreciate it. As are you. Thank you, Dr. Judy. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening to another great Naturally Healthy Pets episode. Be sure to check out the show notes for some helpful links. And if you enjoy the show, please be sure to follow and listen for free on your favorite podcast app. We value your feedback and would love to hear from you on how we're doing. Visit drjudymorgan.com for healthy product recommendations, comprehensive courses, upcoming events, and other fantastic resources. Until next time, keep giving your pet the vibrant life they deserve. The purpose of this podcast is to educate and to inform. It is no substitute for professional care by a veterinarian, licensed nutritionist, or other qualified professional. You're encouraged to do your own research and should not rely on this information as professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Dr. Judy and her guests express their own views, experience, and conclusions. Dr. Judy Morgan's Naturally Healthy Pets neither endorses or opposes any particular view discussed here.